Hey, welcome back. This is the first video in the work and energy section of the dynamics course. And all I wanted to do here was just list out all of the variables we're going to find in this section and all of the formulas that we're going to use as well. Uh, the reason I'm doing it this way is because especially with work and energy, when these when this first topic when this topic first gets uh, usually taught in dynamics, like if you read a textbook or something like that, or just start doing problems, um, it's it can be confusing. It's overall it's really simple. Like the math you're seeing here in the formulas, it's really simple expressions. Um, but there's just some definitions. Like all of the formulas have names and stuff, and I find that. Um, it can just get confusing for no good reason. So what I've decided to do uh, with this format is just have the variables and the formulas that you can just come back to at any time. And then in the next videos, I'll actually go over and explain in more detail what's going on with each of these formulas. But for now, I think I'm just going to quickly read through them, make sure we know all of the units. And uh, that should be enough just for this video. So uh, the capital U here, this is for work. Work is in units of joules. It's the same thing as Newton meters. And the expression for that is just F cos theta S. F is the applied force. S is the displacement. And cos theta is the angle between the two if they're not aligned. Or if they are aligned, this will just become one anyways. Uh, capital T is what we use for kinetic energy. 1 half mv squared. M is mass in units of kilograms. V is velocity in units of meters per second. Um, when we see capital V's, that's referring to potential energy. Uh, we're going to be finding gravitational potential energy, which is this one, which is mgh, so again, mass times acceleration due to gravity times height in meters. And VE refers to elastic potential energy, so that is what is stored. Uh, we're going to be dealing with that in spring problems. Um, 1 half kx squared. K is a spring constant. It will be given to you usually. X is the like spring um, like displacement, how far stretched it is. Um, and it's always going to be positive because the spring force will always be directed towards the unstretched position. So if the string is stretched out, it's pulling in. And if the string is if the spring is compressed, it's pushing out, you know, it's pushing back to get back to that unstretched position. So that's why it's always going to be positive. Um, in general, we for potential energy, we need to add the two of them together if they're both present to get um, the actual potential energy. And this is referred to as the potential function. So when you see V here, if there is a combination of gravitational and elastic, that's what's showing up in all of these V1s and V2s. But yeah, this next line here is what we call basically just the conservation of energy equation or conservation of mechanical energy, um, where we have the kinetic and potential energy in state one plus the work done between state one and two will give us the kinetic and potential energy in state two so this work term here this is usually referring to friction or like a non-conservative force and if there is no non-conservative forces present so if it's only conservative forces that just drops out that just goes away and we can just simply have t1 plus v1 is equal to t2 plus v2 this is basically saying like if potential energy decreases, then kinetic energy will have to increase in response to that or vice versa. You see this a lot in like the roller coaster type problem where you, you know, you, you start at a high point and you go down. So your potential energy is decreasing, but your kinetic energy is increasing, that kind of thing. So the next line down here, uh, this is referred to as the principle of work and energy. It's another popular formula for using in the work and energy sections. Basically, it's just a simplification of the one up here, the conservation of energy equation. We've just removed V1 and V2. So you're going to use this one in the types of problems where the velocity is changing, but the potential energy is staying the same. So that would be like a block sliding across a table, you know, horizontally um, and like slowing down due to the friction or something. So like the friction would do work on the block and then the kinetic energy would uh, in state two would be less. Or the problems like where a vehicle is accelerating or something and you want to see how much work the engine is doing. Um, you can re rearrange it to see that the work here is just the difference between T2 and T1. And if one of these is zero, if one of the velocities is zero, so if it's starting at a rest or ending at a rest, then the v, the velocity will be zero and this term, one of the terms will drop out, which again makes it quite easy to work with. So all of the terms basically up here have all been in units of joules. 
Um, they're all relating to work and energy. And then just down here, we have power. Power is just equal to work over time. And so it's going to be joules per second. Uh, and joules per second is also is watts. That's the, the unit of power. Um, power is just the time rate of doing work. And then here we have efficiency. So efficiency is just the ratio of power output over power input. And it's always going to be less than one because of losses due to friction. There's never going to be a case where you're going to get more power out than you put in in a motor or something like that. So yeah, that's uh, that's really all I wanted to do is just quickly run through the formulas. Really the purpose of this video is so you can have it, you can pull it up, and you can just see basically the formula sheet. And if you forget what any of these variables are, you can see them all here. Um, that's everything that we're going to be working with. So, um, yeah, join me in the next video, actually the next couple of videos, and we'll be going over all of these things. But in the next one in particular, I'll be talking about work. So I will see you there.